water crisis, I think, is um, it, it underscores what we've been saying for years, but doesn't seem to resonate with many others, that West Virginia's water is probably its greatest resource. It's most precious resource. It's worth far more than coal, yeah. oil, gas, salt, water, chemicals. The new carbon. Yes. It's, it's been the new carbon forever, but people didn't know it. It's been amazing that we don't protect water. Water you have to have for life. But you see, we have, have so have much it. of it here. It, it was considered <coughs> it's a nuisance. And I mean, because you have it, it everywhere you look, you take it for granted. We've used our rivers as open sewers, and they still are. And this is something that is not well known. There's almost a relief, though. There are people I've noticed through this water crisis, people want to believe it's okay. They want to believe that they can take a shower, so they do. I heard our caregiver say, hey, look, I cooked with it. I showered in it. I'm okay. I said, that's not scientific. That's just not. You, Your skin didn't burn off, but in 10 years, are you going to have cancer? You right? never know. You liver just never cancer. know. Liver cancer. Yes. Never mind. We already have the highest cancer rate in, in some cancers you know, in the nation. I don't know if enough people are connecting the dots, but when you couldn't drink the water, you were supposed to not even touch the water. I got in my car the other day and I thought, if I hadn't lived through this, I don't know that I could relate, really, because who can relate to being told not to touch the water? I would like to see us recover our water. I'd like to see West Virginians uh, yeah. clamoring for purity of our God-given resource, this water. I'd like to see unbelievable, unmatched innovation yes. to make this the cleanest, best place to live ever. Yeah, that's you know? the answer. People have been wondering, well, what, how are we going to meet this? Well, you're not going to be able to paint over some pretty little image right. of West Virginia. No. What you better do is make it real. Make you it know, real. Come on with, um, set the highest standards here for yeah. green, sustainable systems. Yeah. You do that, and you make it real, and you don't try to cut corners, and you don't tell lies about it. Right we will revive the reputation that we should have had all along. The city can do this, builders can do this, developers can do this, citizens can do this, innovators can do this. It's all about setting those standards. The way a city works, we have tremendous issues with stormwater runoff. We have to deal with this incredible water sewage issue. There are so many opportunities to innovate there. Builders and designers, architects, uh, general contractors can help. Material innovators can help. Pervious concrete can help. Can help filter some of this pollution out. But we all have to get together and decide that these places that we love need to support the people, the talent, the creativity, the, the brilliance that's And cultivate for. our own people. But until this happens, I think will be less than mediocre because you can't recover very uh, quickly from the world knowing that uh, your water was spoiled and that you have no real plan to fix it. And authorities choose to ignore it rather than They speak gibberish. Remediate. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand they have a hard, hard job, but their job ultimately, when you're in the public realm, is to serve the people and serve the interest of future generations even. It's not a phrase I just learned from an extraordinary place in Kansas. The Kansas Leadership Center is for the common good. Yeah. For the common good. What a crazy idea. <laughs> water. For the common good. Yes. It would be awesome to have water that everyone could drink. In fact, world-class water that would be the envy of the entire planet. And then we could help others achieve yes. clean water. You know, yes. open source innovation, well, maybe. I they have know. created the water sustainability Somebody's, institutes. Yes. It's the Chamber of Commerce and the Charleston Area Alliance is, uh -huh. I think, behind that. So that's, a, that's good news. I, yeah. 
and that's going to be at the tech center, this regional tech center um, in South Charleston. That's very good news. I, w I hope that they're going to publicize it loud and long. And? And take note, I, I hope that it's going to be authentic. I hope they set the standards. We are known for having low standards. There are builders that come out of state that laugh at our building standards being so low. They participate in our conferences. They're held to a higher standard in their own homes, you know, in other states. They come here and they said, they say frequently, West Virginia doesn't have any standards really. It's easy to meet these standards, whatever. I'm here because, yeah, we've been building to Energy Star standards. We've been doing WaterSense certification for years. Not required to do that here. I say with all of the comprehensive planning that's going on now, with all of the issues for retrofitting our stormwater systems all over the state, the incredible needs with water and wastewater infrastructure in our rural state, wise up to the most innovative, common sense, low cost, no cost ways of doing things. Instead of being dragged. You know, seek, ask seek questions, questions, set standards, say, no, I'm going to have the purest water in the world. I'm going to find out what's in the water, find out who put it in the water, why it's in the water, and we're going to hold people accountable for taking it out of the water. Mm -hmm.